nothing like that sound first thing in the morning hey everybody welcome back to the channel this is big jim with big jim fishing and yes we finally got a decently cool day we had a little bit of rain last night so we're going to get on the water today and we're going to shoot a video so today's topic we're going to talk about some settings on your hummingbird that you can use with your vx mapping to improve your navigation which will ultimately improve your fish catches right after this. All right, welcome back. Hey, we're out on the water. I got dad with me today. Say, hey, dad. Hey. And uh, I want to teach you guys something because we're actually going to do it today. Uh, we're going to start this video series called using your electronics for you advanced anglers out there this is going to be stuff that you already know however i might have a tip or two in there that could help you out uh, i'm going to talk about power i'm going to talk about your graphs i'm going to talk about mapping i'm going to talk about forward facing sonar your trolling motor we're just going to talk about you know, there's a lot of videos on out there on, hey, you need to have this, you need to have that. But this series is going to be how to use that stuff out on the water. Um, I tend to get a lot of views on my electronic training series videos, so I decided to start this one. So without further ado, let's get this boat on plane. Now, hi guys, uh, we're, we just launched out on the water. It's pretty early. Uh, in the morning sun hadn't got up, but we do got some cloudy skies. So that's gonna make for a good video this morning But I wanted to talk about You know your bass boat electronics and and things that are in your bass boat Now first off uh, Yes, I'm on the powerhouse team. Okay, but I am gonna tell you that my powerhouse lithium batteries make all the difference in the world when it comes to your electronics. Like I'm gonna show you right here, I got 17.4 volts and I'm running four units, okay? I have two Solix 12s here on the console. You can see Solix 12. I have a Solix 12 up on the bow and I have a Garmin GPS map 1222, which is the 12 inch version that is not touchscreen. My black box is in that compartment right there. And I will show you a clip that I do have it where I am running 28 volts to my black box, which was recommended by Powerhouse to get the best possible clear image that you can have. If I want to run my electronics off of this battery, I switch it to 16, which is my preferred method. I also have something that is very interesting that they installed for me. I have this rectifier right here. And the purpose of that is it reads off of my 36 volt trolling battery and rectifies it to 28 volts and then sends that power to my Garmin GLS-10 black box. And I control which battery powers my black box by this switch. I can either have 28 or 16. So if I turn it to this side, I'm reading off of my trolling motor battery, going through the rectifier, then going through this up to my Garmin black box. If I turn it to this side, my black box gets 16 volts and it reads off of this battery, okay? So it gives me two options. Now, a lot of guys will argue, you don't need 17 or 16 volts at your units. You're right, you don't. But if you want good performance all day long, when those lead acid batteries that are 12 volts, 
they're going to drop down to 11 and 10.8 especially if you're running multiple graphs where the lithiums will not do that i have these screens you know solixes suck power i mean they are power hogs and when you have your backlight on 10 like i do right now it will take a lead acid battery that's 12 volts and it will draw it down to 11 volts in about 30 minutes that's going to hurt your performance on the software and the processor on these units so power is key now if you want an in-depth video about my setup i'll leave a link in the description below and uh, I'm going to show you the thumbnail right here where you can take a look at it. That's the video that you're looking for on my channel. Uh, but yeah, okay, so we've discussed power. Uh, some of you guys are going to argue that I don't need that much power. But I'm telling you, when you do, you don't have the issues out of touchscreen units and so forth. It makes your processor run better and everything just works great now on my previous boat and i'm going to show you a picture right here i only had one graph i had a solix 15. and then when i ordered this boat i ordered it with the helix 15. and here's the picture right here well i determined that i did not like the helix 15 because the processor could not keep up with the VX map in that particular unit. So I upgraded to two Solix 12s. I am a big proponent of having two graphs on your console, and here's why. You can see we're idling out to the main channel of the lake right here. We're going between these two islands. The main channel's the green, right, a blue right out there. And this is what we're looking at. By having two maps, when I'm running, I can have one zoomed out so I can see down the lake and I can have one zoomed in so that I can see the detail on my VX card of where I'm going. I do that for safety. The other reason why I like 12 inch units is that you can see my windshield sits about two inches above. I have plenty of clearance to see. Now I'm a tall guy, I'm six foot four. So, you know, my 15 inch came to right here. I still could see. However, you know, most guys aren't my height and having two units gives you a little bit more clearance. Also, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. If you do go with two units, get this Hennessy wedge that sits right here underneath the graphs. You can't tell it, but what it does is it makes those units sit perfect where when you tilt them, they don't get cockeyed and you have like the bottom sticking out. It makes them straight and really aids in the viewing. And when that really comes into play is when the sun is straight up in the air, I don't have a problem with glare on my screens when wearing polarized sunglasses. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but it is a big deal. So if you get two units, get you this Hennessy Outdoors electronic wedge. I'll leave a link in the description below. That way your graphs sit perfect. Now we're out here just about to the main channel now. And I'm gonna show you why I like two graphs. But before we get going, let me show you a setting on the mapping where my icons are in the center of the screen, right? Well, as soon as I take off, I wanna be able to see what's up in front of me. So I have my cursor position set to auto so that when I do get on plane and you can set the speed in settings, my icon will drop down to the bottom of the map. That way I've got more forward view. And let me show you how to do that right now. All right, so to set your vessel 
so that the icon will pop down on your map. Have your map up, hit your menu button, which is the three lines with three dots. Come over to chart options, general, and then right here you see vessel offset. See vessel offset? I have it set to auto. You can have it off, on, or auto. When you have it on auto, that's what makes it shift down. So we're gonna take off, we're in the channel. We're gonna take off and get on plane and I'm gonna show you guys how that allows you to see more of your map when you're going down the lake. All right, here we go. Boom. See how my vessel dropped down to the bottom of the map? So yeah, guys, that's why I like to have two units on my boat. The second reason why I like to have two units on my boat is let's say, you know, I get to my fishing hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over towards this flat right here. And I'm gonna show you, like if I'm looking for fish, I wanna be able to have a good map here, but I want my side and down imaging to come up. So, being that my transducers are connected to this unit, this is the one I'm gonna show for down imaging. So I hit my favorites. I've got my down imaging and side imaging, but I also created one called Scout. And what this Scout is, I created a view and I have a video that shows you how to do that. I will leave a link in the description below. Here's what the thumbnail looks like for that video. And you can create this view, which gives you three different pieces of information. You have your side imaging, you got down imaging, and you got 2D. And then what I'll do is I'll come over here to this map, I'll zoom in. And look at there. So now I can start scouting around for fish. I'm up on this flat. I have my color set for 12, for 12 to eight feet of water to be green. And actually the lake is up a foot because we've got a bunch of rain last night. And matter of fact, let me show you how to do that right now. If you want to adjust your water levels, you just hit your info button or your menu button. And you can see here, water level offset. I'm gonna bring it up to summer pool at zero. Close the map reset. And now your the depth of the water is actually what is showing on the map. And I got that information that we were at summer pool from, I live in middle Tennessee. This is Old Hickory Lake. I pulled up the TVA app for Old Hickory and it told me what the water level was gonna be this morning. So, 
we got all that set got my side imaging look we're marking fish right there do, 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 do. now i like to run my side imaging a little hot and the reason why i do that is so that my fish look like white tic tacs uh, i haven't adjusted anything since the spring on my 2d i mean on my down imaging but my 2d is looking pretty good but this is the other reason why I like to have two units. That way I have a map and I have my scouting mode for this unit right here. But hey, thanks for watching this video. Do me a favor, man, down here in the bottom, you know, mark that bell so you get notified. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. This is Big Jim with Big Jim Fishing. We'll see you on the next video.